How's it going guys? My name is Michelle and welcome to another tutorial from Django for Noobs. Um, this is the third tutorial and today we're gonna uh, learn how to make a chat application. Uh, just like the previous tutorial I've already written the code because uh, it's too uh, too much code over here and I cannot type it on the video and I only have like 15 minutes of video permission upload permission in YouTube so alright so you can see that I've got a project over here the project name is chat underscore 2 and there's an application called alpha a bunch of templates views models and stuff like that let's start with the models.py file I've got a chat model you see over here I've got a created field it records the time when a chat message is saved over here got a user field it records which user you're logged in while you're saving the chat message and it obviously has a message field which records the message itself um, coming back to URLs we've got login logout and uh, a landing page that's home this home is going to uh, hold our um, chat application and a couple of more views um, post view for posting the message and the messages view for uh, retrieving pre previous messages uh, with uh, in, in the chat model so in the views file you see the views are already over here I'm gonna come back to it uh, but I'm gonna have to start with uh, the template first so you can see over here I've got a very basic template I've made with bootstrap it's got a form on the bottom of the page which contains an input field and a send button which is currently disabled right now we'll talk about the two and over here we don't have any messages yet so it's showing this message and if you have any messages it's going to be showing over here as a uh, list elements okay so this is the code to the template i'm importing bootstrap jquery and the bootstrap js i don't need this for this project but you know it's there so, and I'm importing the chat.css for you know positioning this stuff on the bottom and stuff like that. And I'm also importing chat.js or JavaScript file from the static folder. All right. This is the body, and uh, if you go to the view, go to the view, in the home view. I'm uh, getting all the chat. Uh, instances and I'm passing that in the chat uh, variable so over here uh, I'm using a for loop to get all the chat messages from this chat variable and display it over here right now we don't have any messages so if you're empty you will see no messages yet uh, on the page you see a couple of uh, script uh, JavaScript line over here this this line these two lines actually auto scrolls the page if uh, your messages are overflowing you know vertically so it auto scrolls, scrolls the page uh, to the bottom so that you can see the latest messages um, so how a chat application works is uh, basically the place uh, this place down here this is the form this form over here this uh, is actually an Ajax form not an HTML form so whatever you type over here let's say hello it's gonna send over here immediately and uh, that's that's basically what an Ajax form does and the cycle of the Ajax form is that from the template it goes to the JavaScript uh, the JavaScript sends it to the view which sends the result back to the JavaScript and the JavaScript again sends the result back to the template and then it shows over here so once you submit the submit your message let's say hello once you submit your message you're passed to the custom um, what do you call it custom script that you wrote so what it does is that it waits for an event the chat form on submit this form is called chat form so when you submit it it will prevent its default action that is posting the uh, form as an HTML form and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna capture the message 
it's going to capture the value of the chat message chat message is this box and then save it to message box and go to the post URL and save take this message box value as a post value over there right the post URL this message box value gets captured and uh, it is used to create a chat instance and if the chat message is not empty it saves it on the database and returns a JSON response with the message as well as the user mind it that the user is not the user instance but the user name because JSON response cannot uh, serialize user instances so this view actually takes the value from the JavaScript and saves it on the database and returns a JSON response now on successful return of uh, on successful response it goes back to the JavaScript and runs this function on success so this function captures the response on this JSON uh, variable that I've named JSON it does a couple of things first of all it creates uh, a blank chat message over here so whatever you type over here once you hit enter everything goes back to you know empty and that's what this line does second line appends the that message that you wrote to message list now if you go back to the uh, template you see that message list is the is an unordered list so you append a list element on that unordered list and then it gets you know added over here so you say hi it's over here right and again those two lines that we saw over here these two lines they if you if there are too many messages and you're overflowing vertically it scrolls all the way down to the latest message these two lines so once you submit the message it scrolls down all right so next what we have over here is a function called get message what get message does is that it runs this see over here it runs this URL messages it runs this view it's very simple view it's chat.objects so all it gets all the chat messages and it passes it to the messages template as chat variable in the messages I've copied and pasted this portion over here right so whatever you see over here I've got a function for loading this and I'm going to tell you why so I've got a function for loading all the messages just the lists not the whole template just the lists so what happens is that this get messages function gets all the chat lists and you know again these two lines it scrolls down and stuff like that and then there's another function with set interval to 2500 which means after 2.5 seconds you run this get messages function so every 2.5 seconds you're getting all the messages that's there in the database and displaying it over in this in this panel over here you see a bunch of scrolling false scrolling to over here that's because oh, once you have like two to three hundred messages uh, you might want to scroll up and check your previous messages but if you don't have this scrolling true false stuff like that over here um, it's gonna go back to it's gonna because of these two lines it's gonna go back to the latest message every 2.5 seconds so you cannot scroll fast enough to the you know messages in the to the early messages right so I'm gonna explain what this does over here so first of all you see that uh, I've set a scrolling variable to false and I'm saying that whenever this message list div this div this panel is being scrolled you change that variable to true right so the scrolling is now true because you're scrolling <coughs> and the refresh timer for get messages is 2.5 all right so what happens is that so once your scrolling is equal to true this condition over here turns to false so what is this condition there's a not sign in front of scrolling so if scrolling is true this condition is false and these lines gets the messages 
right so once you're scrolling you don't get messages if you're not scrolling then scrolling is false and this turns out to be true right so once this is true and you're not scrolling so then you get messages up to 2.5 seconds let's let's just change it to 500 so after every half a second and this bit of code over here this is responsible for the disabled send button so that you don't send empty messages to the database but once you write something the send button gets active but once you delete everything it gets disabled again it's a neat little trick um, so one more thing that I'd like to show you is that in the template you see that we have a form but we don't have any CSRF token if you work with Django for a few weeks you're gonna know that a form needs a CSRF token to be passed so these bit of code this bit of code takes care of that CSRF token from the JavaScript side uh, if you're willing to create a Ajax form you need this code to be over, over here um, I didn't actually write this code I copied it from uh, the Django documentation you just search Django CSRF go to the first link and click on Ajax over here and under Ajax you see first bunch of code you copy and paste it and then the second bunch of code all right that's where I got this from uh, the Django docs say that you need this on your JS to create a an Ajax form um, so that's about it uh, let's let's check it out let's check out how this works on multiple users so I'm I'm logged in over here as admin you can see from the panel okay logged in over here as admin and I've created another I've created another uh, user called Michelle so I'm gonna log in so let's check over here hi admin it says hi admin over here uh, I can type hi Michelle it says hi Michelle over there this is cool. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically it. One more thing that I'd like to go over is that you see, what it, whenever I'm typing as Michelle, my messages are on the right side and the other messages are on the left side. Whenever I'm typing as admin, my messages are on the right side too and the other messages on the left side. So it's because of this uh, if statement over here. You see? so when we're going through the chat variable uh, on a, with a for loop I have an if statement if object at user if the user that's saved with the chat uh, over here you see if the user that's saved with the chat message is equal to request.user then you align right if not then you align left so that's basically it the same same thing goes over here too All right so that's basically it um, this is obviously not a very good way to make a chat application because uh, it's not very effective. You see that I'm loading the wall, loading the wall message, all the messages from the database uh, every 500, every half second. So that's not very uh, efficient. I have to. Uh, we must load only the parts that we did not load. That's the very point of JavaScript or Ajax. Uh, so but that's that's really advanced for now uh, I hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed this video like and subscribe and uh, I hope I don't take another three months to come up with the next video um, hopefully I'm gonna be back in a couple of weeks thank you very much guys like and subscribe bye